Hello, my wonderful viewers, and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Overanalyzes. Today, we're going to take a look at Kai chapter 28 of Kaiju number 8. Now, if you are thinking that that's a little odd that we took a look at chapter 29 last week, yes, I was essentially sick this week it came out, so I missed it. And since we are on a long gap week, I think it'll be great to do it now. So, now on the surface, if you remember, chapter 28 is nothing special. It's once more simply a predictable beat in the pattern of the combat chapter. Within the chapter, you have four main beats. In the first beat, our heroes are caught flat-footed and the situation is dire. In the second beat, the heroes find their footing and slow the advance of an enemy. In the third beat, the heroes gain the upper hand and turn the tables on the enemy. Now comes the fourth beat. This will be either a victory or a sudden change in fortune. It's a very straightforward anime beat series. On the surface, it's nothing special. On the surface, you run into that concept again. This anime is not trying to be original. It's trying to be good. Keep the art technically perfect. Tell, do good storytelling. But that simple side of it, the anime battle beat, is so inadequate to, to, inadequate to describe everything that's going on in this chapter. So that's the end of what I've got written out for the script. Again, I was sick, so I never finished the script. So the rest of this is going to be Freestyle Friday. And there are going to be many, many spoilers from here on out. So you have been warned. So while I give you time to click away, click away if you want to have something to entertain you until the next chapter of Kaiju number 8 comes out, then you can, should check the links below. Check out my books. My books are now available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and Google Play Books and Kobo. Now, what is Kobo? Kobo is an ebook, just like Google Play Books, an ebook seller, but they sell books through Rakuten. But what that what that basically means is this was a small ebook company. Walmart bought them and now this is basically selling books through Walmart. So I can say that Walmart is stocking my books. It's <laughs> uh, they've jumped into the electronic book market as well. But anyway, those are the four links below. Check out my book, Humans Are Weird. I have the data. Short, humorous science fiction stories if you want a good chuckle. So, but back to our main topic. And again, there will be spoilers. You have been warned. So we start out the chapter with a look at the magnification sequence. Now, if you want to talk about tired, old anime tropes, the heroes are battling the monster, they're winning the monster, and then the monster suddenly turns giant. That is an old dry trope, but this just makes it juicy. The art is excellent. The storytelling beats are good. The the emotional acting, because you know, when you're drawing characters, it is the artist acting. They're pup puppeting, I guess. So we get the intense concentration from Hoshina and this just look, this perfect look from the glasses girl back in command. She looks shocked, she looks terrified, but she still looks in control. She is a professional and she has not lost control of the situation. Again, these artists, they take something very old, very boring, very trite, and they make a masterpiece out of it. You get all these little details. As the monster expands, they don't forget the environment around him. He breaks into windows. He knocks over telephone poles. He's this irresistible force constantly meeting immovable objects. Again, it's these little tiny details that keep it from being just something trite and dry. Now, this is where we get the, I don't know if you could call it a plot twist, but it's definitely a subversion of expectations. We're, we're all wondering how exactly Kafka's powers work. Kafka's wondering how his powers work. And over the next few pages, as this Dai Kaiju, this super powerful Kaiju, is transforming and getting bigger, Kafka responds. Now, we might think that he was partially transformed under his suit, but he but because we might think that, he explicitly states that he's able to sense the Kaiju even in his human form without transforming, which is very very interesting. This could have multiple different explanations. This either means that there are certain humans who are capable of sensing kaiju and that Kafka was chosen because he's one of these humans, or it could mean that even when he thinks he's fully transformed back into a human, part of him, maybe his brain, maybe his gut, and you know, interestingly enough, to contr to transform him, that tiny kaiju crawled down into his gut. Now, your gut has a direct connection to your brain called the vagus nerve, where your your gut is constantly sending instructions to your brain. When you feel hungry, when you're craving, say, 
toast or cake or any carbohydrate that's not you, that is the many parasites living in your gut. They're not parasites, so they're symbiotes. They're good for you. They're part of your digestive system. They digest the carbohydrate, the bread, the toast, the cake, the pastry, the apple, the carrot, and they give you glucose out of it because you really are only meant to di digest the glucose sugar. So, and to communicate their needs to you, to give them what to work with, you've got your vagus nerve. And 90% of the information that flows over the vagus nerve flows from your gut to your brain. So your brain is constantly listening to your gut. So Kafka, he probably has that tiny little kaiju down in his gut. And that tiny little kaiju sensed the giant transforming kaiju and screamed up to his brain. Now, if the tiny kaiju can communicate with his brain, does that mean it can actually control him in his human form? That's a very, very interesting thought. And all this plot is packed into one page. These huge questions. Is Kafka in control of himself? Is he a sleeper agent? Is that tiny little kaiju controlling him? And one page and one really intense scene. Okay. Also... The, the, the sense, sensing this is incredibly stressful for him. The veins are bulging on his face. That was that could not be fun. Okay, then we have a few pages dedicated just to showing the magnitude of the threat. All the various mouths popping out. And here we have the Daikaiju transforming into a Fortitude 9.0. And now, Glasses Girl looks really worried. Because that means that Captain Hoshina can't handle what's about to happen. Now, I want to take a little sidetrack here to look to consider something. They're rating these kaiju on a scale from 1 to 9, it looks like. Possibly 1 to 10. And kaiju at a level 5 are fairly easy for the beginners to handle. And they'll put them up against the beginners. But at level 9 is something that not even their greatest warriors can handle one-on-one -on -one by themselves. Even the amazing Mina has to have the kaiju set up and contained for her so that, so that she can hit it with her giant gun. So this causes me to think that we're dealing with a Richter scale. For instance, a one-point earthquake you're not going to feel. It's like the beating of your heart would overwhelm the sensation of a 1.0 earthquake. A 2.0 earthquake, you might feel if you're indoors, you're not gonna feel it if you're outside. This is, a, but a nine point earthquake could destroy civilization as we know it. This is because instead of going up by a factor of one, I believe the Richter scale goes up by a factor of a thousand, so a 2.0 2 earthquake is a thousand times the power of a 1.0 earthquake. And so that's why, why the intensity of the earthquake increases. So I'm, I'm thinking that the kaiju are based after earthquakes, are based on the kaiju rating system is based on the Richter scale rating system, which makes sense. Kaiju have always been sort of a representation of a huge uncontrollable natural disaster and the most common mundane natural disaster that strikes Japan on a regular basis. And any, any nation that's on the Pacific Ring of Fire is in fact earthquakes. Now, it, then the battle scene comes up, and we have the situation where our hero just knows he's outclassed, but just goes for it with everything he's got, and the art is beautiful. Again, I am just struck with the impression that the artist just really, really liked drawing Hoshina, because, man, you can feel this guy moving. It's almost as good as watching the anime. Almost. Okay. Again, the, the stress gets worse and worse, and that's when we discover... The fact that the reason that they have limiters on their shoots, the Kaiju Defense Force, their Kaiju sh power suits have limiters on them. And these limiters are because if you use high, if you use high power for too long, you start to overheat, which makes sense. This is partially what I speculated about. The, the stress of drawing that much power through the suit just causes the, the human body to shut down. Think of your internet router. If you leave it on for too long, it overheats and you lose the internet. Only in this case, the internet is brain function and your body shuts down. And of course, being a manga hero, Hoshina just work, powers through it. On a side note, powering through physical exhaustion, especially overheating, is a terrible thing to do in real life. And if your boss has two brain cells together, they will take you aside and politely chew you out for being that stupid. This is experience speaking here. I am not the strongest nor the fastest of my coworkers. I have never been in any situation that I've worked in. But 
to compensate for that, I would often just work harder, longer, stronger, not complain, keep going. And I worked myself into the ground a couple times, and whoo boy, it's not fun when you overheat. I just kind of went home, crawled into a cold shower, and just kind of breathed. I've never actually had full-on heat stroke, but heat stress is no fun. And I think that's very, and again, that's kind of clever on the writer's part here, because None of us have actually fought a kaiju or wrestled with a kaiju. I mean, Steve Irwin should not be counted. He's an outlier. But a lot of workers have had to deal with overheating and heat stress and heat stroke. And even if you're a kid and you've just been mowing lawns, it's something you might have had to deal with. So they give their hero a very relatable problem to face. And that's pretty brilliant writing. And again, the art is just beautiful. There's this one panel and they compose this massive grand scale. You can see the buildings in the background and how large this kaiju is just in one panel. And they combine that beautiful artistry of the grand scale with the eyes. I mean, they, they're not eyes, they're actually laser beams, but they look like eyes coming out of mouths. This is a classic horror trope, the eye within, the eye within the mouth where it's not supposed to be on the body. And you just feel the terrifying moment of realization. And then they flash to Hushina's face. And you just realize that he is not going to enjoy this. Then we end the chapter on a cliffhanger. And Glasses Girl is horrified, and we are horrified. And Hoshina has just taken a blow. He's bleeding from every orifice, and he appears to have gone completely limp. So, that is this book and again these artists just like drawing Hoshina even when they've dr drawn him literally in his low in the lowest place the lines the art I do not know enough about art to do this justice all I can say is pretty shiny I like this art there is nothing in this art that offends my senses as it were and if anybody could comment below on what is different about the panels with Hoshina in them? I just don't know. I'm sure it's just the technical skill. I know that my technical drawing skill spikes when I'm drawing something I'm really passionate about. I once did a drawing of orcas swimming in the, Alaska, the inside passage on the Alaska Marine Highway, and it was far and away the best thing I've dr drawn for years, either before or after. And when they draw, when they draw Hoshina, it's just beautiful. And if anybody who has actual art skills can tell me what are the technical terms for why this art is so good. I know the lines are clean, the proportions are right, the body is anatomically accurate, but what else? I mean, there's just so much about this. I'm sure it has to do with shading and whatnot. So leave a comment below. Tell me what's so good about this, because I don't know enough to do it. So that is my analysis of chapter 28. And to give just a little extra. I'm going to look at 28.1 and look at the art. And what we have here is a very interesting and adorable uh, piece of artwork. We have Kafka and, me and not Mino, Kafka and what's her name? Impertinent girl. Kafka and Shinomaya and they're hunting a little kaiju and they, they they both look astounded and interested. You know, when you turn over a log and find something disgusting and fascinating below it, that's the look on their faces. Kafka's got this adorable little net. And what they've done here is that they've captured a moment from nearly a completely different genre of manga. You know those... It's like shoujo. It's more like shonen than shoujo. But it's for kids, like for, for little boys and girls. The manga where the adventure is going out and capturing a newt or a salamander in a net. And that's what they're showing here, only it is a very nasty looking kaiju. Small, but the longer you look at it, the more horrific it becomes. So, then you have just a headshot of kaijus number 8 and 9. Then a redo of the kaiju number 8 cover where it's Mina and, and Shinomaya ch hanging and chilling with their guns. All right, so now, I, some people have had questions. Why don't we get another chapter this week? It, from what I've heard, and this isn't exactly rumor. I've seen it pre sourced pretty well, but I can't find the sources, so treat it with a grain of salt. The 
the artist is helping to get the third volume of the manga book out, and they didn't have time, because of that, they didn't have time to properly do another chapter this week. And rather than giving us a rush chapter, they are going to uh, take, take a week off. Now, this of course means that the next chapter will hit on April 1st. And I know that in Japan they know enough about American holidays to know that's a little suspicious, so I'm not entirely sure we're going to be getting a normal chapter. Now, April 1st is more of a Western holiday, but it is a very, very well-known Western holiday, because honestly, who doesn't like a good prank? Now, so hopefully we get a full chapter with maybe a funny joke in it, but if not, the next chapter is releasing on April 1st, so we will see. All right. That is another Freestyle Friday. As always, let me know what you think about Freestyle Friday. I know I have more ums and uhs and pauses, and I'm not as coherent because I really like to make a script, but let me know what you think. As always, while you are waiting for our favorite manga to come out, click below and for check out Humans Are Weird. I have the data, a book of human absurdity. What if humans were the kaiju? What if we were big and strong, but friendly, like the cheesy 70s kaiju? So, check it out. What would our alien friends think of us? Humans are weird. I have the data available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google Play Books, and Kobo. Peace out, my wonderful viewers. The book from author Betty Adams, Humans Are Weird, I Have the Data, is a humorous look at human behavior through the eyes of aliens. This book is arranged in separate reports or essays, documenting the experiences with humanity through the lens of the aliens who have to interact with them. This anthology of short stories and vignettes from alien points of view highlights some of humanity's quirks we can all relate to. Author Betty Adams captures how strange and interesting humans can really be. This is a fun collection of stories you will really get a kick out of. Humans are weird. I have the data from author Betty Adams. Order your copy right now on Amazon.